Hi, and welcome to Conservation Essentials, which provide you with vital skills for implementing and managing conservation projects. In this course, you'll approach the advanced steps of the Open Standards for the Practice of Conservation, also called the Conservation Standards. These standards provide a set of best practices for the successful implementation of conservation projects. This course focuses on step three of the conservation standards and will teach you how to advance from the drawing board to active implementation. In other words, getting your conservation projects up and running. The conservation standards is a product of the collaborative work of the Conservation Measures Partnership, which include all these partner organizations that maintain and regularly update the conservation standards. This course has been endorsed by CMP. As a member of the conservation community, you are already aware that our projects tackle large, complex and urgent environmental problems. In designing and implementing our projects, we frequently face uncertainty and a lack of existing evidence to support our decision-making. The conservation standards provide an effective and systematic way to approach such complexity and uncertainty. They also provide a way to use evidence when it does exist so that we can build on what we already know. As conservationists, we're constantly asking ourselves three key questions. One, have we selected the right interventions to achieve our desired impact? We need to use the best available evidence to make decisions. But where evidence is lacking, we need to use adaptive management to address information gaps and take actions built on clear, documented assumptions. Two, are we implementing our interventions in the best possible way? We need to regularly assess if we are implementing our actions well, if they're leading to the desired results, and if modifications are needed. Three, are we achieving our desired impact? This points to the need to monitor our outcomes to determine if we are achieving our stated goals and objectives. The conservation standards provide a process to help us answer these questions. They're organized into a five-step project management cycle that guide conservation teams and practitioners to design, implement, monitor, and evaluate conservation projects. The conservation standards also enable teams to learn from their monitoring results and adapt to changes swiftly and flexibly. If you've worked with the open standards in the past, you might blink and wonder, what is this and why the name change? Why does this cycle look so different? So, let's talk about these changes. CMP, with the support of many individuals from the Conservation Standards community, recently updated and released version 4.0 of the Open Standards for the Practice of Conservation. Recognizing a need to improve the messaging and communication of these standards, CMP has updated the look and feel of the cycle itself. You can see, it's much more modern, colorful, and sleek. The intention is to visually convey a long-standing principle that teams should enter the cycle at the step that makes most sense for their context. They do not need to start with step one, assess. Although there are additions and improvements in 4.0, the core standards and principles have not changed much. The five key steps are still there, but the language has been simplified to more directly communicate what each step entails. CMP, in consultation with some CCNet partners, also decided to use the term conservation standards as a shorthand reference for the Open Standards for the Practice of Conservation, which remains the official name. So going forward, we will mainly use this shorthand term, conservation standards. Version 4.0 also contains several other refinements, such as greater detail on the later steps of the cycle, and refinements to all steps based on lessons learned over the years. For more information, you can check out version 4.0 on the Conservation Standards website. So here's the previous Open Standards cycle. You can see that it's a bit more convoluted. There's quite a bit of detail. And here are the two cycles side by side, the old Open Standards and the new Conservation Standards one. Obviously, the look and feel are quite different in the new one. Comparing them, you can see some content changes. In general, the step names are simplified down to one word. The sub-steps are also trimmed back. And language-wise, the only major change is that step one is now assess, a term that is simpler and sounds less jargony than conceptualize. 
Within the steps, there are some minor terminology changes too. For example, a conceptual model is now called a situation model. This is because a conceptual model could be very broad. Situation model provides a clearer link to the situation analysis process, which can be displayed as a diagram, as we see here. Version 4.0 of the conservation standards clarifies that we should lay out our assumptions in what's called a theory of change. The theory of change can be in narrative text, a diagram, or some other form. A results chain, such as the one you see here, is one way to lay out a theory of change. Most guidance on implementing the conservation standards did convey this point, but the term theory of change did not explicitly appear in earlier versions of the conservation standards. They mainly referred to assumptions and results chains. An important motivation behind this addition is that the term theory of change is widely used in evaluation literature. By using it in version 4.0, the conservation standards community can more seamlessly communicate with a wider conservation community. In summary, we will not lose assumptions or results chains, but we now use theory of change, which more easily translates to other communities and fields. Back to the new conservation standards project management cycle. As we said, it is still organized into a five-step cycle. Good conservation practice requires working through these steps iteratively, but in practice, it also involves a bit of jumping around and back and forth. We may begin by designing our initial project in the assessment phase with the best available evidence so that we understand the context well and can plan our actions and monitoring. From here, we implement our actions and also carry out monitoring to assess our progress and address areas of uncertainty, using our findings to analyze and adapt and finally, we capture and share our learning with our colleagues, our organizations, and the larger conservation community. In this cycle, every step informs and reinforces the next, which is why the process is iterative. As we said in the beginning, it's important to recognize that not every team will start at the assess phase. Teams should enter at the stage that makes sense for them. No matter where the team enters the cycle, there will still be the same iteration and back and forth, and they should eventually come back around to the beginning of the cycle to reassess their context and update their plan as appropriate. We mentioned that this particular course focuses on Step 3, Implement. It is designed for students who already have a working knowledge of Step 1 and Step 2 of the Conservation Standards. Many of the concepts presented in this course refer back to earlier steps and products. If you need a refresher, you can review the Conservation Standards and FOS training manuals. And there's also an online training course in Steps 1 and 2 at conservationtraining.org. You can find links to these in the suggested readings for Module 1. A little about our course. It's divided into six modules, each featuring narrated lecture presentations and stories from conservation practitioners in the field. You will have weekly assignments, peer reviews, discussion boards, and knowledge checks. Students who successfully complete the course and meet all requirements can earn a certificate of completion. Again, welcome. We're excited to accompany you on this journey during the coming weeks.